We had a customer bring in his vehicle, and he looks like he used a, is it VHT night shield? Some kind of like paint for the tail light. And um, honestly, in my opinion, this, this tinting spray, it doesn't really look that good. And you can actually see, I don't have to tell you that it doesn't look good, you can actually see it. I don't know if it was the install or if it's the product itself, I don't know. But as far as what's on here, it doesn't look good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually show you how to remove the, the nightshade on it and actually tint it with the tail light tint vinyl. And uh, hopefully it looks a million times better. The customer will leave here happy. So let's get into it. The first step that we're actually gonna do is we masked off the light. Um, you know, in some cases you might wanna take this off of the car, take the light off the car. Um, we are pretty comfortable with how we're gonna apply this. So I'm not worried about it hitting the paint. Um, but you can choose to remove the lights. The reason why we're gonna leave the light on the car is because we're gonna be pushing pretty hard on this to get this off. So it's good to have the light stationary, but you do wanna keep in mind that you do not wanna get this on your paint. Uh, it's not a good idea to actually let this come in contact with the paint. That's why it's masked off, and we're gonna take extra precaution to make sure that this doesn't make contact with the paint. I'll say that over and over again. But um, yeah, and they are staying so we can kind of push a little hard on this. But um, first thing you wanna do is get some gloves on because you don't wanna get this on your hands if it'll dry, it out really, dry your hands out really bad. So let's get some gloves on and just start going to town. Yeah. final product looks like uh, we actually removed all the tint off using that brake cleaner and it came out pretty good came off pretty well um, it didn't damage anything it seems like it's all good I think we're gonna need to go and maybe give these a clay bar and clean them up a little, a little bit better but other than that it, uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought I was gonna be they're gonna be ready for tint shortly so we'll get to that next so before we actually start tinting any light what you want to do is you want to clay bar the surface um, there's multiple ways of or multiple types of clay bars um, we use the, I believe it's called like a nano skin clay bar. Very cool. Um, this is from Mothers, but it works really good. What we're going to use here is a soap and water solution to actually do the, the whole. This will be used for the install as well as the clay bar. What you want to do is you want to soak the light. Make sure you get it fully soaked all the way through. And then just lightly hit it with the clay bar. What this is going to do is it's going to remove any contaminants on the surface. Make sure it's nice and clean. In this case, this light was actually uh, spray tinted prior to us tinting it, so there's a lot of residue on here that we had to work to get off, but this actually helped out a lot. So a couple things to note on this particular tail light. All tail lights are different, but um, a lot of them do have this. There's a little uh, indentation here on the light. There's also one here. I believe those are used when they actually make the tail light when they create the mold for them. So you are going to see that through the tint. There's no way around it. They're going to be there. So they, sometimes they can look like a bubble. But they're not. There's one here and there's one here. Now that the light's clean, first thing we're going to do is actually spray down the light. We're going to use just water to do the install. You can choose to use water and soap. Um, that helps dilute the install and slow down the drying process. Um, in our case, we know how to work the film. We don't want it to take too long to dry, so we're just going to use water. But you can choose to use either or. The process is exactly the same. But in a nutshell, what we're going to do is we're going to spray the light down, apply the tint, and we're going to use a squeegee to push the water out towards the edges and clear underneath the film of all the water. So let's get started. So here's a piece of tint film. This is available on our website, premiumautostyling.com. It's just a bulk sheet of material. This is usually the best way to tint any light. We do offer pre-cuts for certain models. The only models that we offer pre-cuts for are ones that are gonna be you know, able to be done with the pre-cut. Some lights can't be done with the pre-cut um, because of the complexity of the turns and bends. So we don't make pre-cuts for all models. We only do it for certain vehicles where it actually works. But in this case, we're gonna use a bulk sheet. This is a, basically a 12 by 24 sheet of material we're gonna use to cover this light. Right now we're gonna just go ahead and remove the backing to expose the adhesive. It's always good to have a, a second hand for somebody to help you so you can actually have them spray down the, the material. So we're spraying down the back side of the adhesive. This is the sticky side that we just sprayed. We're gonna apply it to the surface. So we're gonna focus on this light only. We're gonna do this in a separate sheet. So here you wanna set up the material, get it put in place nicely. Um, you wanna work the flat side first. So basically if you look 
this is all flat, it's very easy to install, so we'll start from here. We're just working the water down. But when you apply heat, it definitely softens up the material, makes it easier to lay. What I did there is we just dried out the water that was left in there. A little bit of heat will definitely do it. Also, a little bit of cure time. This material takes about, I said about a day to fully cure out if you're using water solution. So you see there, I left a little water behind. So we need to push that through the channels. You want to just give it some pressure. You can also lift up if you need to. Lightly lift it up. Give it some heat. Some pressure I was able to push out the, the water that was left behind up here. Heat up, heat up the whole light, get all this water to dry out in here. So you're gonna want to do it kind of like a more of a slow motion just to make sure you're watching the water clear out. If you did leave you know a, a, a mass load of water um, you'll actually see it and you know, that's what you're gonna want to work out. So you let the film cool down before you lift back up if you need to. So in this case, I see that I left a little bit of water right there, right up here. So there's a little bit too much water left there. What I want to do is I want to let it let it cool down, and then we can actually lift it back up again, push that water out, and relax the film back into place. So let's go ahead and do that. So I was able to lift it up fairly easy, just pull a little bit of tension, and the heat will actually mold it back into place for you. You just need to work the water out towards the edge. So with everything laid into place, looking real good, we're just gonna go ahead and trim it out using a blade. You're definitely gonna wanna use a, a sharp blade. Uh, these are available on the website as well. We're gonna run the blade against the, tail, against the tail light, not the vehicle, not the paint, in that negative space between the tail light and the car itself. We're just cutting away this excess material. You wanna give it a little bit of extra material so you can wrap it around the light for a nice clean install. It starts to conform and using your finger it's always good to have a glove these are also available on the website uh, just to keep your hands from getting too hot you just wrap it right around the edges so now the light is actually installed we went ahead and you know wrapped the edges around um, you will see that that indentation that I talked about earlier it is there you're gonna see it it's in the light it's gonna show through naturally. Kind of looks like a bubble, but it's not. Um, the rest of the light in general needs to cure a little bit because we actually use the water solution. If there's any water left behind, it needs to cure out. It usually takes about 24 hours for it to fully cure out. But in this case, it looks really good. It looks significantly better than it did without, you know, than, than the actual spray tint that was on there. It looks much better, uh, more glossy. Uh, it definitely has a better appearance in general. So we're gonna finish off the light. After that, we'll go, go ahead and give you guys a demo of what the light output it actually looks like. But yeah, so the light output is very, very minimally affected. You know, it's about five to 10% that you actually see a difference. Um, you can still see your brake light, everything's fully visible, and it just looks great. So I think it looks a lot better between the two. If you look at the smoke and you look at the red, this looks much more aggressive. So the light's already been clay barred. First things first, we're gonna spray down the light using our water solution. It's the light mist. This is a very easy light to do. You'll see that I have a sheet that's definitely larger than the surface we're applying to. When you're purchasing the material, you want to make sure you order order more than, than necessary because you're going to want to use that to actually mold and put it into place to make things much easier. Using a felt tipped squeegee, felt edge squeegee, you're going to go ahead and just start pushing this water out from underneath the film. You're able to lift it because it is wet. You're able to kind of lift it up and push the water out. Another thing I like to do is spray the face of the light. It helps glide the squeegee along the material much easier. So right now, at this point, this portion of the light is what I focused on. So 
stuff to work my way up. I also will have to work my way down eventually. You just lift this and push the water out towards the top. You're always working towards the edge. And because the light's a little rounded right here in this section, about a half inch down, we're gonna go ahead and heat it into place. And heat this up and work the material down. Last thing, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to to dry off the light. You go ahead and heat it up. And the heat will tell you if there's any water left behind. You'll see it bubble up. So in this case, nothing's bubbling up. Just gotta go around the edges and you wanna lock this into place. Once again, gonna use my finger to push it into place and lock all this down. Using the blade, we're gonna go ahead and just trim off the excess material using that negative space in between the light and the car itself. Be very careful not to touch your paint with the blade. Here we go, last step. Now it's all trimmed out. We're gonna go ahead and heat all of these edges again and make sure this material lays nice and comfortably right in here. So by the video, I'm sure you guys can tell, visibility is affected very minimally. Um, you saw the stock light, you saw the, the tinted light. Um, it was a very, very minimal in difference. This does have a more aggressive appearance, you know, when the light is off, as opposed to this right here being the red. Uh, but when it comes to actually visibility of your lights, you lose very, very little, and uh, it actually doesn't doesn't affect it at all. Yeah.